Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Today's broadcast is absolutely for every American. It's time to stand up. America, stand up and be accounted for, to be, to be represent not only our nation, your family, but the kingdom of God. And if we will do the things that God has asked us to do, the Bible says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It is time for America to stand up, to reverse the curse that has been some of the abominations that have been put on this nation. We can change it. We can organize. We can regroup. And certainly we can pray. And when we come back in the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you some of the unbelievable events that have happened in history. I'll be right back. Prophetic Letters for America. This two-part DVD will raise the faith within you and this nation. From our founding fathers to our current president, America has been blessed with the power of the Word of God. You will hear some of their prayers, presidential prayers that each president prayed, and their faith of the Bible. You have to get a copy of this DVD and be blessed in the Word. All right, all right. You know what? America, it's time to stand up. And this is a time like never before as we're witnessing biblical pro prophecy taking place around the globe, whether it be in South Asia or it be in the Middle East or Europe or this nation itself. There is absolute comprehensive complexities taking place that are showing us that the biblical prophecies are coming to pass. And America has a major role. We are the wings of the eagle. We can fly, and, and we have a responsibility to also always stand with Israel. Matter of fact, prophetically, I believe we do. Here's what the Bible said, though, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed." Israel was given a covenant promise by God that anyone that blesses them will receive the blessing as well. And the cursing of Israel would only bring misery and destruction and defeat to those nations that do that. I mean, don't forget what Zechariah said in the 12th chapter when he said, For the Lord seeketh to destroy all nations that come against Israel. And in Zechariah chapter 2, he said, Don't touch the apple of God's eye. Well, there's a few times, America has always stood strong with Israel. We have, I mean, think about it. Harry Truman, are you serious? He's the one that when, he, when the United Nations, after the Holocaust is over, after World War II, and when the United Nations is formed and decide to form a nation for the Jewish people, of course, who had survived the Holocaust and uh, were being persecuted globally, uh, when they formed the nation of Israel, it wasn't first called that. In the documents coming from the United Nations, the document said that it would be called the, the Jewish state, the Jewish state. But Harry Truman took his ink pen and marked it out and said, no, the Bible says it's the nation of Israel. I love reading that document with his handwritten, marked out, signing his name, Harry Truman. And recently, President Donald J. Trump made another major proclamation declaring that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, the eternal city of God. It didn't set well with everybody, uh, uh, but it didn't matter. It was prophecy, and it was in the 70th year of Israel's existence and just celebrated the 50th year 
of Jerusalem's reunification, following biblical prophecy. This blows my mind how things work. From the covenant of Abraham that I just read to you to Jesus Christ is 1948 years. From Jesus Christ to the rebirth of Israel as a nation, 1948 years. And from the destruction of the second temple in 70 A.D. to today, the, this time that we're airing this, it's 1948 years. So, and it happens to be the 70th year of Israel's existence. So basically what I'm saying is there's a prophetic timing in play right now that you can't change. You can't change it. It's happening before your very eyes. There's some things, though, there's some times when America forgot, made decisions that were against Israel, maybe through political pressure from the world stage, but always a consequence came with it. The first time, uh, the United States government refused to veto an anti-Israeli resolution at the UN Security Council was in 1979. On March 22, 1979, the Carter administration chose not to veto UN Resolution 446. Four days after that, on March 26, the Egypt-Israeli peace treaty was signed in Washington. And as a result of that treaty, Israel gave up a tremendous amount of territory. They parted the land. Two days later, March 28, the worst nuclear power plant disaster in U.S. history took place at Three Mile Island. Now, on October 30th, 1991, President George H.W. Bush opened the Madrid Peace Conference, which brought Israelis and Palestinians together to negotiate for the very first time. In his opening speech, President Bush told Israel that territorial compromise is essential for peace. And at the same time, the perfect storm formed that very day. Brewing in the North Atlantic, this legendary storm traveled a thousand miles in the wrong direction and sent a 35-foot wave slamming directly into President George H.W. Bush's home in Kennyport, Maine. Unbelievable. But these are just two examples of some of the events that happened when America forgot to always stand with Israel. And again, America has to stand up, and not just for Israel, but we got to stand up for the unborn. Ever since 1973, over 65 million abortions in this nation, and trust me, folks, that abomination cannot go on without a consequence. Neither can we sit idly by as prayer and, uh, was removed from our public school system and the Word of God taken out of the classrooms and the Ten Commandments off the walls of every courthouse across America. What has been the result of that? Mass shootings, murder, mayhem in the streets. We have paid a very, very high price, a price that many of us shake our heads and wonder why. Because America, only when we stand on the Word of God, this nation was founded upon the principles of the Word of God. And if we do the right things, when the righteous are in authority, well, we rejoice. Again, it comes down to that. Let me give you another example, number three. On August 23rd, 1992, the Madrid Peace Conference moved to Washington, D.C. And the very next day, Hurricane Andrew made landfall in Florida, causing $30 billion in damage. It was the worst natural disaster at that time in the history of the United States. Another example, number four. On January 16th, 1994, President Bill Clinton met with President Assad of Syria to discuss the possibility of Israel giving up the Golan Heights. Within 24 hours of that discussion, the devastating North Ridge earthquake hit Southern California. It was the second worst natural disaster in U.S. history. You may remember that earthquake. Are you serious? We constantly see uh, <laughs> immediately, it's almost like it's immediately, tremendous ramifications for our decisions to not stand with Israel. Now, like I said, many times America has. 
and that's brought great blessings upon the land. And I can tell you what has just happened uh, on December the 6th, uh, 2017, uh, recently, that, that decision by the president to declare uh, Israel, the, uh, Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, uh, will bring tremendous, tremendous uh, blessing upon this nation. It is the coveted promise of God. Another example, number five. On January 21st, 1998, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived at the White House but was received a very cold reception. In fact, President Bill Clinton and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright refused to have lunch with him. That same day, the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke, sending the Clinton presidency into a tailspin from which it would never recover. I mean, that's unbelievable, really. You might say, well, that was going to break anyway. Maybe, maybe not, okay? One thing's for sure, you don't want to, uh, you know, disrespect a uh, prime minister that arrives, especially when you've scheduled him to come, and then not meet with him. That's what always worries me when I see sometimes people do childish things. And I've seen this by many world leaders. It never works. Be a man. Be a woman. Be responsible. Hold the office that you have. Even if it's an awkward or difficult situation, show up, stand up for America. It's very important. I'll give you another example. Number six. On September the 28th, 1998, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright was working on finalizing a plan which would have had Israel give up approximately 13% of Judea and Samaria. And on that precise day, Hurricane George slammed into the Gulf Coast with wind gusts up to 175 miles an hour. Again, another prophetic confirmation of what the Bible said in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said in verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We've watched several things happen including the uh, Isaiah chapter 45 scenario where King Cyrus was, was literally brought to power by God to help the nation of Israel. And certainly when he stood and did the things that uh, was required, God returned tremendous blessings in the direction of his nation. We are watching without question. Biblical prophecies now being played out before our very eyes. World leaders are going to make decisions. Some are going to be good. Some are going to be bad. It's sort of like this. I'm personally, you personally, who love the Lord, who support the work of God, are faithful in your, your giving to the Lord. You are blessed and highly favored. But you might be, you still could be living in a house with a bad stepfather, okay? So you got innocent kids that live in a house that they haven't done nothing wrong. They might be living in a house where the leadership of it is not good. It brings turmoil to the atmosphere. Even though that's going on, you as a Christian can rise above that by making the daily commitment to follow the Word of God and to love His Word. Keep it. I'll be right back in just a moment. Prophetic Letters for America. This two-part DVD will raise the faith within you and this nation. From our founding fathers to our current president, America has been blessed with the power of the Word of God. You will hear some of their prayers, presidential prayers that each president prayed, and their faith of the Bible. You have to get a copy of this DVD and be blessed in the Word. All right, are you serious? Fun facts, that's not very fun, but when you read what happens when people don't do what they're supposed to do, well, it can get very, very dangerous, and it affects millions of lives and billions of dollars, and we've seen that happen over the years. Now, in the book of Isaiah, though, we have a prophecy. We told you about King Cyrus. King Cyrus, in the 45th chapter, 
Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two levied gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, and thou shalt may knowest that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. King Cyrus is called the anointed. In another scripture, he's called the shepherd. All right. He helps the nation of Israel defeat its enemies around it. And because of this, great blessings come upon Israel his people. A lot of folks have, have compared President Trump to King Cyrus. Kind of uh, one thing to watch for is the fact that it's Isaiah 45, and of course Trump is president number 45. There were several other uh, comparisons throughout the scriptures that folks have used, and uh, interesting for sure. Uh, for instance, uh, President Trump was born on June 14, 1946, during a full blood moon. And when he laid his hand on Ronald Reagan's Bible and was sworn in as the 45th president of the United States, he was 70 years old, seven months, and seven days. Uh, these are just some of the information that you can't figure out how that could be. But sometimes, prophetically, you see God specifically will choose people. We've seen it all through the Bible. Matter of fact, Jeremiah was in his mother's womb. And the Lord said, while you was in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you a prophet for Israel. John the Baptist was in his mother's womb. And when Elizabeth heard the salutation that uh, Mary, the virgin, had conceived of the Holy Ghost and was going to bring forth the Christ child, the Bible says that the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy full of the Holy Ghost. We can f watch uh, many, many prophetic events taking place. And sometimes I watch very closely to see. Uh, you can see the signs of the coming of the Lord everywhere now. I got another one for you, number seven. On May the 3rd, 1999, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was supposed to hold a press conference to declare the creation of the Palestinian state with Jerusalem as the capital. But on that precise day, the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded in U.S. history ripped through Oklahoma and Kansas. At one point, one of the tornadoes had a record wind speed of 316 miles an hour. An incredible, he delayed his announcement after 11 days of negotiating with Bill Clinton and uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Barack of Israel. They had agreed to a two-state solution, which would include the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. But the tornadoes tore through the country. The announcement was delayed. And then Yasser Arafat woke up the next morning and said, you know what? I'm not going to do the deal. It's all or none. Are you serious? Now today, they're begging for the same deal, and it seems to be slipping away. Uh, look at number eight. On April 30th, 2003, the roadmap to peace that had been developed by the so-called Quartet was presented to Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon by U.S. Ambassador over the next seven days, the U.S. was hit by a staggering 412 tornadoes. It was the largest tornado cluster ever recorded up to date. Uh, unbelievable, again, as if God, the hand of God, the prophetic hand of God was saying, no, no, continue to, st America, stand up. Stand up with Israel, stand up for what's right, do the right things, and be blessed. Uh, but if you curse Israel in any way, you will be cursed. This one here always has been an incredible 
uh, information I'm going to share with you. Number nine, in 2005, President George W. Bush, the son of former President George H. W. Bush, convinced Israel that it was necessary to remove all the Jewish settlers out of the Gaza Strip and turn it over entirely to the Palestinians. And according to the New York Times, the very last of the settlers was evacuated on August the 23rd, 2005. On that precise day, a storm that would be given the name Katrina started forming over the Bahamas, and the city of New Orleans still has not fully recovered from the damage that storm caused. It ranked as the costliest natural disaster in all of U.S. history to that time. Matter of fact, the number of settlers that left Gaza under the uh, uh, ordered by President Bush was 1,809 settlers. This will blow your mind. The number of people who died in Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, 1,809. Are you serious? Uh, again, the hand of God happening directly tied to events that had taken place. Number 10, on May 19th, 2011, Barack Obama, President of the United States, told Israel that there must be a return to the pre-1967 borders. Three days later, on May 22nd, a half-mile-wide EF-5 multiple vortex tornado ripped through Joplin, Missouri. And according to Wikipedia, it was the costliest single tornado in U.S. history. It literally tore, ripped the city of Joplin, Missouri, in half. Uh, unbelievable, considering he wanted to go back to the pre-1967 borders and divide the nation of Israel in half. And uh, so these, these events that keep happening, folks, I think should send a significant uh, wake-up call. And I think sometimes people don't know this. The Bible's covenant promises are real. And if you do the right things, if you stand for what's right, and I look at America's time to stand up and I say, America, it is time to take responsibility. You know, we did with slavery. Let's be honest. Slavery, slavery was awful. Slavery was a curse on the nation of America. And finally, after the costliest, deadliest, bloodiest war in our nation's history, dividing this country in half, we finally abolished slavery. Our president paid a price with his life, as so did many, many Americans on both sides, but a healing did come. Matter of fact, some of the greatest revivals ever took place in both the Confederate troops and the Union troops. A little fact that most people don't know is uh, Confederate General Robert E. Lee led one of the greatest revivals among his troops known to man. They set up tent chapels throughout the camps and thousands of his soldiers prayed and gave their life to Jesus Christ. Similar things were happening in the north as they were praying to God. It was a nation torn apart by an abomination we should have never done. Today, we still have some more curses that need to be reversed. And if we are willing to fully do more than just pray. You know, I, I look at the scripture where it says in 2, Thessalon uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal the land. God has heard America's cry. I believe that the, during a, a tremendous amount of time of prayer and fasting and seeking the face of God has happened in this country, and God's restoring us. But there is some abomination curses we must reverse, and we can if we'll pull together, work together, fast and pray together. We can see America stand up again. I'll be right back in just a moment. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you. 
but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you. All right. I mean, it's amazing what God can do, you know, whenever we as a, a body of believers, you know, in these last days, we're going to have to uh, see more unity and more uh, the church pulling together more powerfully than ever before. And we must pray for our leaders. And I always have. It doesn't matter who holds political office, no matter which political party they're from, doesn't matter. I pray very, very, very much that God would use them, direct them, that they would make the decisions that would be best for our nation and even our allies. I think it's very important. Right now we see the world is uh, on edge. The technologies of weaponry has advanced so greatly. Cyber attacks, cyber security is one thing that people fear greatly. EMP explosions over top cities that could fry everything, another major concern. Nuclear detonation hydrogen bombs, or even new uh, mini-nukes put on long-range inter intercontinental ballistic missiles, super power weapons like the rod of God fired from space, or laser beams, or heart attack machines, or we can go on and on and on. As the weaponry increases, uh, men realize they have the ability to do great damage and annihilation. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Pastor, can I be protected in this time? Yes, you can. But first, you need to get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be set free. I want to be, I want to be delivered from the bondage of sin. Break every chain, Lord. I, I refuse to allow the devil to destroy my life. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. I'm repenting of my sins. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life to save me, to set me free, to fill my heart with love, to give me hope, to give me victory and take it from the jaws of defeat. So right here, right now, Lord, by faith, I'm calling on the name of Jesus. I'm accepting him as my Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved I'm saved, I am saved, and I'm looking, <laughs> praise God, I tell you, somebody out there just grabbing a hold of the Lord, I tell you what, you just got set free. We love you. We want you to know how much we love you, and why don't you write us, let us know that the Lord has saved you. Let us pray for you, and uh, believe in his miracle-working power in your life. <laughs> 